Welcome! In this episode we will install the keel and the false stem. The keel is this longitudinal timber here. It protects the bottom of the boat and it increases both the strength and the stiffness of the bottom significantly. Uh, the false stem right up here or the cut water is a vertical timber added to the bow of the boat and helps us to cut through the water. Let's get started putting these in. Here we are zoomed in on the center line of the boat right here. The keel will be fabricated from a 2x6. Because the keel will cover the center line, I needed reference marks over here about 2 and 3 quarters of an inch from the center line, which is half the width of the keel. The 2x6 I purchased was 14 feet long. Here it is centered and hanging over the back of the boat a bit. Once satisfied with the alignment down the length of the boat, I installed a screw right here near the transom. I then used a ratchet strap to bend the 2x6 slowly around the bottom until it touched the bow right here. I also used a ratchet strap between, uh, between the frames uh, notice the use of scrap blocks. These increase the clamping pressure. You may see gaps even with the, the blocks and the strap pretty tight. Like notice right here there's a gap in this aft frame. Uh, th the way I handled any remaining gap was to do this. I just climbed under the boat and wedged a 2x4 between the floor and the bottom of the boat. Use a block on both ends to protect your floor and boat. Uh, once the gap was removed or nearly removed, I used 2 inch screws, 6 inches on center, and in two rows. You can see one row here. This is the center line. So spaced on either side of the center line, I have a screw. They're 6 inches apart and they're two inch screws through the three quarter inch plywood and into that inch and a half thick keel. I use three inch long screws common to the keel and the frames or the bottom timbers. And later after the epoxy cured I came in and installed additional screws between these so that we end up with three inches on center like most everything else in this boat build. Once everything had been dry screwed into position and looked good, I took it all apart and sanded the fang surfaces in preparation for epoxy. Here I am sanding the fang surface of the keel. Notice that select structural stamp. So far all the timber used in this boat has been select grade. Here is the keel after applying thickened epoxy and screwing it back into place. With the keel at eye level, notice how it curves over the horizon. There is a bit of bending stress here. This is why I chose a select board. In fact, I chose a select board that already had a little bit of bow in it somewhat matching this curvature. The next day I cut off the overhanging portions with a Japanese pull saw. Here is the bow getting cut off. Here is the other end cut off flesh with the transom. Next it was time to work on the cut water portion of the false stem. I ripped it out of one of the 4x4's left over from fabricating the bottom timbers. It starts even with the chine logs right across there. It's a 90 degree cut. It's ripped with a 30 degree bevel to each side which matches the inner stem if you remember we cut that or ripped it at 30 degrees. To fill in this area here and protect these timbers 
I measured uh, the cut water and found that it was two inches thick. Therefore, I decided to run a section of two by six through the thickness planer and plane it down to one inch thick. My plan was to cut it and double it up here. Here they are screwed into place. I then removed them, sanded the fang surfaces, and reinstalled with thickened epoxy. The next day I grabbed the pole saw and began art class. One of the cons of external chine logs is this detail at the bow. But I think the mini pros are worth it. I must say, these pull saws are nice. It allows almost a novice to cut things off flush without marring the surface. And I definitely still consider myself a novice with these type of saws. I'm used to the uh, American style push-pull saw. In fact, it's the first time I've ever called a hand saw that. <laughs> Not too bad there. Okay, now that you've cut all the overhanging stuff off, now what? Pick your favorite tool. I use several, a block plane, an angle grinder, and sander. Unleash your inner creativity and remove everything that is not a boat. This is what I came up with. Sort of looks symmetrical, at least. The only thing I did to the cut water at the other end was cut it off parallel to the shear line. Good enough. So I filled the gaps and screw holes with my new favorite green epoxy fairing compound. The next day I sanded it out. This junction right here is critical. The ends of the chine logs come together here. The keel ends here. The inner stem that the side panels are fastened to ends right up here. Well, right here underneath the bottom panel. The bottom and side panels also end there. They all meet at this point. And most of them are exposing their end grain straight at the oncoming weather. So they must be protected. That is what this bulbous non-structural block is, is trying to do, is protect all the end grain of all that structure. I am both a structural engineer and an aeronautical engineer, or I was until I retired. Uh, both disciplines were at odds with each other on this day. The aeronautical engineer inside me said, but it's ugly. <laughs> so what? It's a work boat. Function is all we care about, right? Then the aero guy said, well, it's a bit chunky, and it'll slam a bit in the waves. And this little surface right here could catch waves or a little chop and send it airborne up and over the bow and right into our face. So, you know, arg, maybe, maybe you're right, and we could make it smaller. You see what boat building does to you? It makes you talk to yourself like Gollum from Lord of the Rings. <laughs> anyway, where's my angle grinder? No guts, no glory. Let's try to make this oncoming bulbous thing smaller. Ah, inner peace. That looks much better. Form does follow function in this boat, but this form looked a little better to me. You do whatever you want to do. I'm sure it'll be great. 
and I'm sure it'll be better than what I came up with here. Well, what do you think? Let me know in the comments below. This project sure has been a blessing to me. I am enjoying the work here and I've been dreaming about several trips I hope to take with this boat. So, alrighty. See you in the next one. Thanks for watching and may God bless you as well. Have a great rest of your day.